Good morning, everybody, and welcome to your Monday Morning Motivation with Pam. I'm so happy to be here because that means it's Monday and it's awesome. I'm just going to invite a couple people to join me. See if we can get some stuff going on here. Cool. All right, all right. I, uh, it's been a crazy day. Um, I know the last few weeks I've liked to, you know, put on some makeup or anything. Anything. Hey, Brandy. I've, I've liked to do a little bit of something. Hey, Georgie. Uh, welcome to your first Monday Morning Motivation. Um, actually, according... Last night I um, did a go live on my page and some of you caught it, some of you didn't, but I'm thinking of transitioning this Monday morning go live into something a little bit different. I love doing motivational stuff for you guys. I love doing, like I love just doing this and I love like giving you value and everything and I want to keep it, I want to keep doing these go lives in this group. And, but I want to change it up a little bit. So last night I mentioned like Monday morning mentorship or Monday morning mindset. And there was a couple of people like, oh, the mindset one, that one, that one would be really cool. So I'm like, okay, well, then that kind of led me to like, okay, well, what if it's like Monday morning mindset with Pam, Monday morning mindset shifts with Pam or something like that. So I'm kind of still working on the title. So as of next week, it'll be, it won't be Monday morning motivation, but it'll be a little bit different. So I'm going to change it up a little bit. And I'm also thinking of changing up the name of this group, um, to something like motivation, mindset, and mentorship for online entrepreneurs or something like that. Because you know that, um, these groups are like a dynamic entity with people coming and going. And, and I love that I can create this amazing community for you guys. So, um, definitely if you have input on something like that, then let me know. You can drop it in the comments of this, um, of this go live, or you can shoot me a message either way. If you don't want it out there for the world to see or the world, the group to see, but I like, I like seeing the conversations. So definitely keep it going. Anyway, so happy Monday. Cheers. This is like my second or third cup of coffee already this morning. Good morning, Tina. I, uh, <laughs> it's been a crazy day. We had drifts. I swear to God, there were over my head out in our driveway. And then my husband got our driveway plowed at like, it was like six o'clock this morning. He finally came and he's like, Hey, I got the driveway done. But when you get to the end of the driveway, the snow on the road, like our range road, is like up high too. So he's like, I can't get anywhere without plowing the whole range road all the way to the highway. And then who knows what the highway's going to be like. I'm like, oh my goodness. And then our neighbor just north of us, they were stuck in their driveway. So they ended up play, uh, paying a greater guy, not even our greater guy in our area, but like down the road. He came and plowed them out and got them unstuck so they could get to work. <laughs> and then our neighbor seen, because what we did was we plowed towards the highway. Like my husband and I were out there with the skid steer and stuff. And we were like plowed just past our neighbor's driveway. And then, and then my husband goes, he's like, if I could just get a really good run at it with the truck. Because he got off our driveway and like just onto the road and he got stuck. So I got out there with the skid steer. <laughs> and we're like plowing that out. And we get to just uh, just past the, our neighbor's driveway and he gets stuck again. <laughs> He's like, oh, I thought if I got, got a really good run at it that I would just like break through those drifts. But they are solid. Holy. So anyway, our neighbor sees us, him go by with the truck. And then not too long ago, me go by with the skid steer. <laughs> and so he comes out with his tractor. So the drifts are just crazy. Yes, um, they are just and it's not even a plow, like a, a windrow, like they, uh, Tina was saying, the plow mounds can be brutal. It's not even, a, it's like drifts right across the road. They're like six feet tall. <laughs> it's the wind blowing the snow across the road and across driveways and everything. So it's, uh, it's been a crazy morning. Needless to say, I have not got my workout done yet this morning. Like I'm on my third cup of coffee. Our poor neighbor, I had him in for a cup of coffee too because I feel really bad 
Brandy, you haven't had coffee or breakfast yet? I will drink a sip of coffee just for you. I don't know how people get through the day without coffee. I don't know how I used to get through life without coffee. I didn't start drinking coffee until I had my first kid and they were feeding it to me in the hospital. And I was just so tired, I drank it. And now I'm addicted. And then now, um, with the bariatric surgery, <laughs> Brandy says thank you. Um, with the bariatric surgery that I'm going to have here in the next couple years, I have to wean myself off of coffee because I can't drink something like that, like with the surgery, like healing. So I'm going to have to wean myself off of coffee before I have my surgery. But good news on that front. I know, I don't know if anybody is following along. So the few friends that I have on, um, Brandy will probably know more about, about this because she's been kind of following along my journey. But I've been part of the local bariatric clinic in here in Alberta for like almost two years now. I've gone through their program. I've been signed off on everybody to have the surgery. And I have my consult appointment with the surgeon Finally, here on the 26th of this month, I'll be heading down to Edmonton to see him. Yay! So excited. I know this is like completely not on topic of my Monday morning motivation topic, but I just wanted to celebrate with everybody because I'm having that. Um, yeah, on the 26th, I'm going to go see him in Edmonton and then... And then we go from there. He either he signs me off on my surgery and it's anywhere from a 10 to 18 month wait for my surgery or he says, nope, you don't get surgery and we, whatever. But so we'll see on the 26th uh, if he thinks that I should have surgery. Or not. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, very excited about that. Uh, on the front of that, my businesses, everything's going crazy. Uh, I've got one client set up for my agency. I got stuff rolling for him. I'm um, supposed to be meeting up with another potential client maybe this week sometime. So that's very exciting. Thank you, Brandy. She says, I will rock it. Um, I'm assuming you're referring to my bariatric appointment because <laughs> uh, of the leg. Oh, what's going on here? Okay. Um, and then, oh, yes, my coaching. I've got like kind of like a timeline and points that I want to hit each week because it's going to be like a six-week coaching six week coaching program that I'm going to be starting to offer here soon. I'm on day, tw or day 20, day 21 of our affiliate accelerator program within the Affiliate Institute. Brandy's in that with me and it's been very intense lately. Like really dig into your brain and like just come up with something right or writing stuff over and over and over again and watching it transform like getting more detailed more detailed that's the part that I was working on yesterday um I did day 19 and day 20 yesterday I was catching up yeah Brandy says she's catching up today um what else day 62 of my second round of the 75 hard and Honestly, at this point, it's become second nature to me. Like, I'm not even really focusing on what I have to do for my 75 hard because of it's just part, it's like part of me now. All my habits are like super ingrained. So, for me, doing the 75 hard plus six accelerator program plus starting my agency plus doing my coaching program, like the 75 hard part of it, it's, it's all, it's like the habits are in me now. I've done two rounds of it or I'm on my second round of it. I'm almost on my second round of it. I did my first round, uh, for those of you that didn't know, I did my first round from the middle of September to the end of November last year. Kind of took December off from the holidays. We went, my husband and I went to Vegas for a few days. So you don't really want to be on the 75 hard challenge if you're going to Vegas and going through the holidays, right? Like you want to be able to enjoy yourself a little bit. And then yeah, right back at it started the 1st of January and plugging through and just plowing through. I've um, I've lost a lot of weight, but I'm doing a lot of um, like body reconstruction. And thanks, Tina. She says that's so awesome. I've lost. I I just did a a measure. Like I took my measurements this time. Last time I didn't take my measurements. This time I'm taking my measurements. And I just did a measurement count not this past week, but the week before, and I lost 18 inches. So, you know, between my stomach and then like, you know, my up, upper arms, my legs, my waist, you know, I took them at various points throughout my body. I didn't take it at like every little point of my body, but get the good spots that you're, you know, you're going to lose a little, you know, I took my neck, I only lost a little bit off of there, but <laughs> if you lose a lot off your neck, there's something wrong. <laughs> so anyway, uh, on that note, that's kind of what's going on in my life now I know I've been super busy I haven't kept 
Um, my other group updated very well, which I feel really bad about. But between all of the things and I just feel like I am on the right path. I started hypnotherapy with Nicole Stroka last week. Um, so we have another session tomorrow and then another sh- session the week after. It's part of like a three week package that she has going. So I'm so excited to like just delve into like um, like limiting beliefs and some self doubt that I had. Like, you know, why, why would people hire me? Um, just stuff like that. It, it was, it was something that wasn't a part of like my, like my, my conscious all the time, but I could always feel it in the back of my mind every time that I would somebody say, Oh, I need somebody to run my ads. And I'm like, I don't don't think I'm there yet. You know, I would have that kind of self doubt. And then, uh, I did something super, super scary on Friday within one of the chats that I'm part of, um, a colleague, she had posted that, and this is the person I'm going to be meeting this week. She said that, uh, the person that she works for, he, um, produces podcasts and he teaches people that want to learn how to do podcasts. He teaches them how to do their own. So I guess he wants to start getting into Facebook ads. His name is Lance. I can't remember his last name. I just followed him on Instagram. Um, and he wants somebody to start running like marketing campaigns and stuff like that for him, uh, promoting his coaching program and com- promoting like, you know, getting people into production and stuff like that. So I was like, I reached out, I messaged him. I'm like, well, I just started my agency. I'm not exactly sure if this is what, like what I'm doing is what you're looking for, but we can chat and see if that's something that you're looking for. So her and I had a really good talk on Friday and she's like, yeah, like, let's get this meeting arranged. Let's figure it out. And so, yeah, super excited. Could be, I could do a podcast. I like doing these videos better, Brandy. I like doing the videos and having the interaction with the lives better than a podcast. It's almost like a podcast because I do. Hey, okay, go read a story. I'm almost done. Go. Sorry, children. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes, I, I don't, I like doing the videos more, Brandy, just because then you know, more interaction. I know it's not as mainstream as a podcast, but I kind of think of it as like a a vlog uh, because then you can find them on my website and stuff, right? So I've been repurposing my go lives onto my website. And so people can go on there and look and it is kind of like a podcast because it's about the length of a podcast, like 30 minutes ish or so, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. The one that Tina and I did was like, it was, it was like 45 or 50 minutes, wasn't it, Tina? Something like that. <laughs> we, we just kind of went on and on and on, and it was pretty awesome. I loved I loved doing that. It was a really, really good interview and a really good, lots of good content on that one. That was, uh, that one was a few weeks ago. So anyway, among all the stuff I have going on, I really want to talk to you guys about this amazing topic because I stumbled on it because uh, something that I have been, I have been entrepreneurial minded my whole life and it's just having my own business and thinking outside the box has always come second nature to me. Like it's always been there. But, um, when I talk to like my sponsor within AI, like Brandy and Jason's, um, uh, Brandy and then Jason, her husband, they're the ones that they're my sponsor within affiliate Institute. They brought me on and got me to learn all this stuff. And I have to thank them every day for, for introducing me to this amazing platform. But he said, Jason was saying that, you know, it's not something that really occurred to him was becoming an entrepreneur or having his own business and stuff like that. So, and not everybody's like that, but there are some surprising signs that you could be an entrepreneur and you could have that entrepreneurial mind, even though you might not know it yet. I might clue you in on this cool little go live here. So <clears throat> essentially, <clears throat> sorry, I got like a little frog in my throat now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, when I was little, I started all this when I was little. I was like five years old. I started painting faces on rocks and selling pet rocks for like a quarter. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but I made a few bucks here and there and it was kind of neat. I would like sit them on our front step. And like, you know, the kids would come by, oh, that one's cute. And they'd have a quarter and I would give them a pet rock. Like, 
I don't know where I got the idea from, but it just, it was fun. And then, you know, it's on hot summer days, I'd sell juice or popsicles or something. And probably we spent more money buying the stuff for me to sell or like make and more time making the stuff for me to sell, like the popsicles and the juice and stuff. But it was something that I liked to do. I liked, I guess my mom thought it was a really good hobby for me, got me out of her hair. I have no idea, but it was something that I really enjoyed. And I just like would have, I didn't have like a table or anything. I would just set up on my front step and the kids of the neighborhood would come and pay a dime for a glass of juice or some stupid thing. I can't even remember. But from there, I've done things like I have my own massage business and um like my husband has his own business too my parents have their own business it's something that especially in the oil field like lots of people have their own businesses in the oil field like consultants or people that you know run safety trucks or anything like that like it's it's just like a second nature up here but lo lots of people don't understand where the entrepreneurial mindset can come from um and more often than not, you do spot it within yourself from a young age, but sometimes you kind of grow into it. Sometimes it's something that you have, you have the employee mindset you are, you work for somebody and you, um, that's just how you were raised. That's all you know. But then you're kind of like, well, what about this? You know, what about having this idea or thinking outside of the box this way or doing this or that, or the other thing, or bucking the system completely and doing your own thing, you never know what little thing could trigger in your in your mind to create that entrepreneurial push to 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 go right. So, whether it's finding your own freedom, hey Sadie, um, finding your own freedom by calling your own shots, being your on your own schedule, whether it's you know you disagreeing with the man, you know whoever you're working for. And doing your own thing that way, it's it's all about just those little things that happen in your mind and acknowledging them, being aware of them. So one one really good um, one really good way of, to tell that you have the entrepreneurial spirit, do you feel like you need to go on this journey? You have light bulb or aha moments all the time if you are constantly toying with solutions for problems or seeing ways around a roadblock um it could be a sign that you're an entrepreneur people problems markets they change like social media marketing digital marketing sadie says oh she loved my message today yes well thank you for joining me live girl i think you haven't joined me live very uh very often so i'm excited to have you on um, especially online, like all these online things, they change constantly, like month to month, day to day. Things are always changing. It's a very dynamic industry and an entrepreneur approaches and, uh, with approaches that those things with like, they're always finding solutions to problems. They're always adapting approaches and products to best suit their customer base with whatever's going on. Right. Uh, number two, you are a rule breaker. <laughs> it's funny because um, yesterday we had to do a go live for part of our program and I did, they're like, do a three to five minute go live and just like, just like spout out some good value for your audience. And I'm like, sorry guys, I can't keep it in the three to five minute margin. My go live yesterday was like eight minutes and that's probably one of the shortest ones I've done in forever. <laughs> so... And then uh, somebody commented underneath there. He's like, oh, well, also entrepreneurs were rule breakers. I'm like, yep, yep, that's true. <laughs> if you've always had a rebellious streak inside you, chances are you are a breaker of conventions and you are a potential entrepreneur. The unique you, the unique ideas, new routes um, to the typically mundane things in life Um that's what leads to successful successful business always being a problem solver but always thinking outside the box always like you know what that's not a rule it's a guideline let's do this instead go for it right just go for it this one i find uh, tina says she's a rule breaker woohoo go rule breakers <laughs> um the third tip that you might be entrepreneurial minded you like to be on your own and this is me i 
whenever I like worked for a living, I always like tried to go do my own thing. And when I was doing safety in the oil field, it's hard to just like go do your own thing because you have to be around people constantly. You're always like, I didn't like being the safety police, but that's essentially what you have to be. You have to be everybody's babysitter. So, but I liked, I liked to interact with people to a degree, but I like going and doing my own thing. Um, I like talking to you guys on here. I like interacting and communicating with you guys and selling you, not selling, selling you guys if I need to, motivating you, but I like my alone time so much. <laughs> yes, Tina says she's checking this one off too. Um, outside of, outside of business or outside, you only have a small circle of friends. And for me, that's definitely it. Like I have a few friends online, uh, mostly the people that are on this go live watching. I have a couple local friends that I really like talk to all the time. But aside from that and like maybe a couple mentors, it's just, I like, you know, my alone time. I like doing my work and reflecting like yesterday or over the weekend, I was like powering through and getting um, my first client set up with his ads. And I was like, you know, this, this is good. Like it felt really good to do something like that. So that's how I like, I like being on my own, doing work on my own and self-motivating, right? This is what I mentioned in my goal lab yesterday. Number four, you are easily distracted. <laughs> and, and I feel like people are easily distracted on the best of days just because that's the way the world is now. Like where Miriam, Miriam commented on my goal lab yesterday, squirrel. Well, Kind of, yes. Between your phone and your laptop and stuff going on around you, like my kids, my farm, my husband, all the stuff going on. I'm like, there's so much going on. But the greatest minds in history had short attention spans. Guess what? You have a short attention span? You have a great mind. Just by default. <laughs> Thin. Um, oh, Tina said she said to big check on this one too. <laughs> Girl, you and me are soulmates. Um, but we we also feel like we're spread thin because of all the things that we're trying to do, all the different streams of ideas. And and it's funny because I'll be driving. That's where I get most of my ideas is I'll be driving. And I'm like, oh, I should do that. And I'll like stop at a red light and quickly tap it out of my OneNote so I don't forget, like on my phone. <laughs> but I feel like I always have to have like a pen or pad or something on me. So I'm like, oh yeah, I should do that. Oh yeah, that should that would work good for this or whatever it is. Um, but while we feel like we have all these ideas and stuff going on, we are so focused when it comes down to like getting stuff done. Like me getting my client's ad set up. I was like, this needs to get done. Me doing my homework for the last couple days. Sure, I had to do two days in one, but... I got it done, and then my kids and I went outside and played, even though it was so windy yesterday. Um, we have a little block of trees right by our house, so we like play between the trees in the house, and it was no wind there, so it was kind of nice. So you get distracted by all the fun things, all the ideas going on in your mind, but you're so focused on, on the things that you need to get done when it comes to crunch time and deadlines. You are a little naive. So did... And it's funny because did Mark Zuckerberg ever consider that perhaps people didn't want to share their daily activities with their peers? Uh, most people before Facebook, before any sort of social media, people were fairly private. But nowadays, people are just so out there. And, you know, this is what I had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Or, you know, <laughs> this is what's going on with my body right now. And most guys are like earmuffs but sometimes not overthinking the thing that you want to do um, or second guessing that thing that you want to do is a risk worth taking so you may be naive in thinking that you know if, if he thought that people didn't want to share their lives out for the world to see then guess what Facebook wouldn't be there wouldn't be there Twitter wouldn't be there uh, Instagram wouldn't be there now it's like LinkedIn and TikTok and all the stuff. Hey, br oh, no problem, Brandy. Um, yeah, I'm down to the last few anyway, so you can you can watch the rest later. I'm like on 24 minutes already. I like talking apparently. <laughs> Have a good day, Brandy. So sometimes 
not overthinking the ideas and just imp, imp, just acting is wor- a risk worth taking. So, um, Georgie says that you guys, oh, you got tickets to Insight. No, I will not be at Insight. The weekend does not work for me. But I went to Awaken in November of 2018, which is uh, was another um, experiential weekend that Todd did. He used to do. And you your mind is going to be completely blown, Georgie. It's going to be amazing for you and your wife. I, I wish my husband went with me. It's not something that he he's like sitting there for three days and telling his life story in front of people. It's not him. Um, he's not that kind of person. And I get it, but uh, I think you guys will have an amazing time. Uh, number six, you know that regimented routine is a myth. And now we always talk about the morning routine, the evening routine, scheduling your time, especially for entrepreneurs, you know, if you work from home, but my work schedule, I have a guideline of how my day should go today, blew it out the window, but that's okay because I have extra time to like fit stuff in. Um, but we like to make our own hours. That's the biggest thing. We decide how our days are going to go. It doesn't matter what other people say or do. We we schedule our own time, even sometimes if it's not specifically scheduled, like today. But we know exactly what's going to happen during the day, and that's how stuff gets done. So, <clears throat> yes, Tina says, yes, regimented routine is a myth. <laughs> but um, it's all about... Yeah, finding your own freedom and fitting your work stuff or whatever into your life and not your life around your work stuff. That is what it's all about. And if you find like that's what works for you, then maybe you might be a little entrepreneurial minded. Uh, Number seven, you know when to say when. Oh, yes. Tina says that's the favorite part, most favorite part of working for herself. Yes, me too. Um, So one... Thing that I absolutely have been like, oh, <laughs> Brandy says she's back. One thing that I say in life is that it's important to work to live, not live to work. To me, living to work is backwards. You have to work in order to live, right? So we work in order to live, but if you do what you love, then you never work a day in your life, right? So most of us entrepreneurs, are complete workaholics because we have found our passions and what we love to do. So it's never actually truly working. Like when I was doing the ads or writing copy or something for somebody, I love doing that stuff. I don't love being a safety person on the oil field in the field. No way. I am, sit me at a computer and in front of an ads manager and I will tell you everything. I am so good at that. And it's taken me a long time to be able to toot my own horn. But I'm so good at that stuff. Like placing ads, writing copy, creating content. I love it. Videos, I love it. Like bring it on. But being outside in this nasty weather, minus 40 weather out on a site, being a frigging glorified babysitter. Pardon my French. I try not to swear on these. But no Thank you. <laughs> I did not like doing that. I did that for how many years? I had, be, had to be safety for how many years? And I hated it. But now that I found my passion and my true calling about helping people, helping people with their, te- their technology, helping people with their media marketing, that is my calling. And I'm absolutely loving everything. And that's why I don't actually work to live. I like, I get to just live. Just live, right? So, and of course, it is nice to be able to unplug once in a while from all this technology. And that's, I do plan on doing that when I go on this cruise in May. Let's unplug a little bit. (laughs) So, but the glorious thing is, is that you as an entrepreneur or going to be an entrepreneur, you will have that freedom to be able to do that. And the last one is that you don't fear failing. Now, most of us do fear failure. But as entrepreneurs, you understand what failure actually means. 
you are taking those risks to learn. So whether you're split testing ads or you're learning how to do sales, you know, sales is all about failure. You're, you're looking for that no so that you can get to the next yes. And taking these risks supported by due diligence and being unafraid, afraid of the outcome gives entrepreneurs a certain amount of indescribable pleasure. So you're not like actually afraid of failing. You kind of want, you kind of want to see the failure so you could see what you did wrong and then adjust. Um, but failures lead to success. Keep failing and you will get to success. It's inevitable. It's just a matter of time if you keep failing, right? Tina says that's been a big learning curve for her. And that's what matters is that it's learning. You are learning, Tina. And that is awesome. You keep learning and you will get there. That's all that matters. Anyway, so those are my eight surprising ways that you could be an entrepreneur even though you... Um, and if you are just jumping on now or if you're watching the replay, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you think of transitioning from my Monday morning motivation to like a Monday morning like mindset kind of go live because I love, love to um, get your guys' feedback. This is your community and this is your group. What? Um, Can you wait for like two more minutes? Um, I'm what? Two change minutes. it. Okay, then change it. Well, I go. Know how. I'm almost done. Go. I love my kids. I think that I've been around them for too long at this point because they're, oh, yeah, they're driving me nuts right now. <laughs> the oldest one goes back to school tomorrow and then we head to Red Deer this weekend for the, um, we're a big supporter of the Wild Sheep Foundation of Alberta because uh, my husband is an avid sheep hunter, but he hasn't gotten one in a while. So <laughs> Brandy says she loves her kids too. Yay for loving our kids. <laughs> I almost kind of wish there was Baileys in this today, <laughs> but I should get them set up with some food and uh, so I can do my workout because I haven't done that yet, even though I've like shoveled a lot of snow and charged through a lot of snow. And yes, Georgie says that he happened to be home today, but normally you work at this time. I'm so glad that you just happened to be home today so you could pop on today. I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Tina. She says this was awesome as always. Love you. Love you too, my lady. And uh, yeah, Brandy will probably see you this weekend in Red Deer. For the rest of you, I will be seeing you next week. Um, let's uh, probably going to do a little change with the name and stuff and a little shift with the content. But essentially, it's going to be me giving you value as always. Monday morning, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon p or 12 p.m. Eastern. I don't know what it is in Australia time. If there's anybody in Australia here, I'll figure it out if you really need to. If you're watching the replay, whether it's on my YouTube channel or on my website, definitely um, look for a link to get inside my group so you can tune in live because I love, love, love seeing your comments live. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Brandy and Tina and Georgie and Sadie and... Uh, who else was on? There was one other person on live. I can't remember. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning on live and interacting with me. I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Uh, I will see you next week here in my group and I will, oh, Sadie says, thanks girl for motivation. Definitely have an entrepreneur mindset. Just need to keep my head forward. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Thanks for tuning in girl. I will see you guys next week. Have an awesome day and an awesome week and stay warm if you're in Alberta. Bye.